one second. Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I beat Angie doing political commentary for the Media Speak. So you might know me from Wits News. You may know me from Blasting News. I imagine some of you that know me from Blasting News have noticed that I have done so far two works on the mighty Judas Priest. And as it were, they were they are celebrating their 50 year mark making music and yours truly is already press passed for well i don't know if i'm going to get to meet them but i've got tickets waiting for me in september so that is uh you may put it on your cell phone calendar it'll go off hey i gotta read sam's article he told me seven months ago when's the last time you tuned into anything and got seven months seven months from now i'm gonna write an article all right, fine. I've dilly-dallied and talked enough, and now we're going to get into the show. It is the massive Fukushima update, and we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, not only do the show, but we're also going to laugh at some of the people that have haunted the comment line who say that I never give sources. What I'm going to do is, if I remember, I give so many I may not even be able to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this trusty, trusty piece of paper here that my... Uh, Dear friend Clarissa gave me. Hello, Clarissa and Will. Um, I'm going to go ahead here, and every time I give a source, I'm going to put a tick down. And we're going to see if we get more people on the comment line telling me that I don't give sources. Now, here's, here's the reason I'm pointing this out. Trolls have been sent out to many of us who are telling the truth regarding Fukushima. And the more you tell the truth, the more people are after you. So when we're telling these facts, what you will find is that there are people commenting in the comment lines of people like us trying to dispel the truth that we are telling by going ahead and saying that, you know, for instance, oh, he doesn't give any sources because I don't always list them in the description. Well, the reason I don't always list them in the description is because if you do that, a lot of times when you're posting on other sites, Facebook is one of them, a lot of times the source will come up instead of the thumbnail icon. That became really annoying. So uh, what I did was, instead of having to click all of these X's off, I just tell you what I'm reading it from. You are, in fact, listeners to the show, not readers of the show. So we're going to see how many sources we give um, and uh, see, if, see if the uh, brilliant trolls that have come to my site uh, return to us. Needless to say, friends, if you follow the, uh, I post twice a month now, things have been crazy and not in a good way. So do a favor and say prayers for yours truly. It would be greatly appreciated. All right, friends, Zero Hedge. Oh, there we go. Zero Hedge. Just in case, or a Japanese set to release 1.2 million tons of radioactive Fukushima water into the ocean, causing immeasurable damage. Zero hedge. Just in case a global viral pandemic, whose sources are still unclear and apparently now include human feces, wasn't enough, the global outrage meter is now about to go up to 11, with Japan now set to flood the world's oceans with radioactive water. In a move that will surely prompt a furious response from Greta Thunberg, don't drop the Thunberg, Ghost writers, unless, of course, it doesn't fit a very narrow agenda, a panel of experts advising Japan's government on the disposal method for the millions of tons of radioactive water from the destroyed Fukushima nuclear plant on Friday recommended releasing it into the ocean. Now, how many times did, Fu did uh, TEPCO tell us that they were not going to release this into the ocean? Guess what? Surprise, they're going to release it into the ocean. As writers... Notes, based on past practice, it is likely that the government will accept the recommendation. Now, let me interject here um, with a couple, which seems to me very important facts. First of all, when they said that they were not going to be able to get the tritium out of the water, this is a very big deal. Tritium is carcinogenic. 
tritium is very dangerous. It's one of the radionuclides that are released with um, uh, routine releases. What uh, Dr. Colin, Dr. Caldercott caused, says causes merely a routine cancer. They can't get the tritium out of the water, and how many times have we been told that they were not going to release it into the ocean? Well, guess what? Shazam, Sparky, they're releasing it into the ocean! TEPCO Electric, or TEPCO, oh, but Sam, it's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, well, it just became conspiracy fact now, didn't it? Tokyo Electric, or TEPCO, has collected nearly 1.2 million tons of contaminated water from the cooling pipes used to keep fuel cores from melting since the plant was crippled by an earthquake and a tsunami. Of course, we know in 2011, the water is stored in huge tanks to crowd the site. The panel, it goes on, under the industry, end of the industry ministry came to the conclusion after narrowing the choice to either releasing the contaminated water into the Pacific Ocean or letting it evaporate and opted for the former even though it means that Japan's neighbors will now have to suffer the consequences of the biggest nuclear disaster since Chernobyl and this is important to, to mention here I, I'm glad he mentioned a thumb thun earlier um, how is it that all of these greeny weenies that we have here don't ever seem to get upset when nuclear disasters are happening? How, how is that the case? Usually I'm the only libertarian s standing up against nuclear technology. And I will tell you why. People say, well, you're not much of a libertarian if you don't think free market. This isn't free market. Let me, let, let me explain to you the way freedom and the free market works with a very useful analogy. I think I may have said this before, but it works. Say we live in a duplex and I smoke weed in my own duplex, my own side of the duplex, and you don't. Me smoking weed is a matter of liberty that affects me and no one but me. However, if I decided I wanted to open a meth lab in the basement, that directly affects my neighbor. Because at that point, if, you know, I make some blunder, then what in essence what I've just done is blown her up. So this is on a on a global scale what we are talking about with nuclear technology. When it goes bad your, your, your other nations, as we're seeing here, get the, the benefit of your quote-unquote freedom. So that argument does not hold any water. It's, don't even try it. And it comes up again and again. The panel under the industry ministry came to the... Con I'm sorry, I uh, read that. Previously, the committee had ruled out other possibilities, such as underground storage, which doesn't work very well on an island nation, the uh, that lack track records of success but excuse me that lack track records for success take two at the meeting uh, members stressed the importance of selecting proven methods and said quote the government should make clear that releasing the water would have a significant social impact you think japan's neighbor south korea the duplex neighbor has, for much of the past decade, retained a ban on imports of seafood from Japan's Fukushima region, imposed after the nuclear disaster, and summoned a senior Japanese embassy official last year to explain how the Fukushima water would be dealt with. They will soon have a very unsatisfactory answer. Now, this is another lie, another uh, uh, ghost chase that is oftentimes used for those who stick up for the nuclear industry. And their argument usually goes along the lines of, well, America's not banning seafood because it's not dangerous. No, that was something Obama did, and I must say, even though I support Trump, he has not done enough in this regard. They're more worried about the bottom dollar, and they're not testing the food due to a number of factors that deal with, in this instance, the, uh, the, the food economy. So in some cases, luxury food economy, and that, that can't be factored out or downplayed either. Other countries have, countries with a very strong track record have, and the South Korea is one of them. So don't act like it's something that only a few fringe people in America are concerned about, because South Koreans are pretty concerned about it. The buildup of contaminated water at Fukushima has been a major sticking point. Yeah, well, it goes on and on. You again, want to read it at Zero Hedge. 
But uh, this is bad. Um, it says, uh, compared to evaporation, ocean release can be done more securely, the committee said. Oh, how nice of them. Pointing to common practice around the world where normally operating nuclear stations release water that constrains tritium into the sea. Again, this has been addressed. A routine release of radioactive elements that cause cancer will routinely give you a cancer! Needless to say, the locals disagree. Now, there is a source for that, which is, uh, it is a business technology. Japan, Japan plans to dump Fukushima water into the ocean. Um, releasing treated water into the ocean would do, quote, immeasurable damage to a fishing sector that has tried hard to get back to work, which they shouldn't be. An industry source in the Fukushima prefecture city of Iwaki said the evaporation proposal, it goes on, has fueled similar worries in farming and ranching circles, according to a source in the rice growing business. The central government should understand the situation on the ground and thoroughly consider its response, the source said. Even so, it appears that despite considering the situation on the ground, the government is set to go ahead and discharge it anyway. And again, this is what I said earlier. Um, why are they doing this? It says here, the reason may also be the simplest one. Money. According to Niki, oh, there is another source. Discharging the water into the Pacific is generally seen by experts as the most logical option. Evaporation was successfully used for cleanup after the 1979 Three Mile, Ax Three Mile Island disaster in the U.S. Pause. And again, many people, we'll go back since we'll stay with the, uh, who we mentioned earlier, Dr. Caldecott, needless to say, the opposite side of the political spectrum for me, but somebody who I have corresponded with and who is right on the money with this. Three Mile Island happened close enough to Hershey that it would probably be wise to limit the amount of Hershey anything that you put into your body. And she said that you can prove that this is largely factual by the fact that she has never once had her data, and she's a doctor, called into question or called into court. And she has begged them to do so, and they will not do it because they know that she is correct. So the fact that Hershey didn't use their money to sue her shows that this was not something that worked in Three Mile Island. It says, but releasing the water into the sea would, could cost less and by ministry estimates cut radiation exposure by more than half compared with evaporation. So this is even worse than the Three Mile Island solution. Of course, <coughs> this is the same ministry which for months lied about the full extent of the fallout caused by Fukushima. Surely this time, of course, they're telling us the truth. The recommendation needs to be confirmed by the head panel, uh, Nigoya University professor Imatrist Achio Yumamoto, uh, and it goes on to explain, uh, you know, what some of that red tape is going to be. Again, look it up. It's on Zero Hedge, you know, since I never give any sources. Uh, Japantimes.co.jp, releasing our radioactive water would further damage Fukushima's reputation. Now... I like the way the article has a bit of spin on it, which would imply that it's all in people's head that they'd have to worry about it. But the fact that a lot of people wisely do not choose to ingest radiation, particularly since we know that many forms of radiation aren't tested for. Yes, cesium. Um, they're not testing sometimes for uranium, not, not, not minute particles. And again, there's no, there's no such thing as a minute dose of uranium. There's a reason that the silly toy from back in the day was pulled. If you don't know about it, look up uranium toy. It will make you cringe. Um, the argument is a feature dedicated to, oh, blah, 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 it's about the newspaper. Releasing the treated radioactive water stored at the Fukushima 1 nuclear power plant risks further damage to the disaster hit prefect prefecture's reputation and negates a nine-year effort to dispel negative perceptions about local agriculture, produce, fisheries, and tourism. In other words, they've been saying, look, we're storing all of this water here 
So you don't have to worry about our food because this area is no longer contaminated. And of course, now we find out that they're going to contaminate it. The governor of Fukushima Prefecture between 06 and 14, I had my work cut out for me after the earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear accident in March of 2011. This is from the uh, uh, Yui Sato. So, uh, another, another. Well, no, because he wrote it, so we won't count that one. Some of my main challenges after the disaster were securing the safety of the residents, ensuring that they had access to evacuation shelters, yada, yada, yada. We know what a mayor does when a disaster hits. Um, let me go then through his whole speech here to what matters. That's why you listen. The fishing industry along the eastern coast, which the nuclear power plant faces, has taken one of the biggest hits from negative perception of Fukushima. The prices of fish caught off market prefecture are extremely low when they are brought from Tokyo. That is because this is toxic and people genuinely, generally do not enjoy ingesting toxicity into their bodies. Friends, if you can donate to the show, I got lots more coming. Please donate at the correct view at correct views, views more than one, the correct views at hotmail.com. You can donate through PayPal. The money you give to me, I put towards a better show such as the printer that I bought, which I've been waiting forever to arrive. WorldNuclearNews.org. That one definitely counts. IAEA chief commends Japan for Fukushima cleanup effort. I'm not going to say that they shouldn't get any thanks for what they have done, what they have risked, what they have given up, and what their horrible future likely is for those cleaning this up, particularly since many of them are poor and uneducated. They have almost no choice. Or, they, again, they just don't know any better. But to praise what they've done is a bit much. Um, I'm not going to go through it talks on and on and on about the storage of the water, and we just covered all of that. Um... What I do want to get to is what Grassi here has said. Once a decision is taken on a way forward, the IAEA would be ready to assist in its implementation. So they don't know how they're going to move forward. And this happened in 2011, in March. But approaching the 10-year anniversary, we have absolutely no idea whatsoever how to possibly fix this. But you get the praise from the IAEA. A Japanese expert committee report and submitted to the government earlier this month will take two options to disperse the water or allow it to vaporize, of course. And uh, the IAEA, that is why when people come to my page and tell me what the IAEA said, as if there's some great intelligence attached to them, it's mind-boggling to me. Hello, Justin Wheeler. You Justin... No, Justin Wurstler, I'm sorry. Liz, Jermaine, and Cindy, hello, hello, hello. Justin wrote, I smoke weed. Of course, as long as you don't have a meth lab in your basement, man, we are good. Or if you do, you know, live in the country somewhere. All right, fine. Oh, weform.org, source number seven. <laughs> as I cough to death on air. Um, after nuclear meltdown, Japan's Fukushima is becoming a renewables hub. Now, I had put here that not everything that we're getting in the news today is necessarily terrible news. I wouldn't want to be one of the people that worked on it or maintained these. But this is better than just letting the land sit and do nothing. I mean, I'm not, I, 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 there's this misconception that your humble host here is somehow against all forms of green technology. That is not the case. It's more that I'm against the lie of man-made global warming, which we have proven many times on this show is not occurring. However, the idea that we can get toxins out of the air that are poisoning our lungs is not a bad idea, nor something that any sane person is against. The magnitude 9.0 earthquake, and I am mostly sane, that rocked northeastern Japan in 2011, I lied, caused a tsunami that devastated both the free, we, all, we know what it did. A group of investors is converting contaminated mountainous area and former farmland that can no longer be used to grow crops or raise livestock into 11 solar power plants and 10 wind farms. Good! 
Operating at full capacity, the hub will generate 600 megawatts of power, about two-thirds the output of a single nuclear reactor. They can get two-thirds from this amount of windmills that cost $2.75 billion and will supply electricity to Tokyo. And yet they built a nuclear power plant on a known fault line when warned by geological experts. And you can get two-thirds as much as... If the plant wasn't there, you could put more up and completely replace it. Billions in subsidies. Cancer risks. Building a nuclear power plant on an island that was made by earthquakes and tsunamis. It's a fresh start. Fukushima aims to become an international center for renewable energy, according to the Japan Times. Source number eight. The prefecture has set a target, they say, of meeting 100% of its energy needs by renewables by 2040, which, of course, if you live on an island nation, you may have enough wind to, in theory, pull that off. Good. Okay, excellent. Um, on to the next. McClatchleyDC.com. Now, this is where I like to take a few, I only got a few stories left here, and talk about how nuclear issues damage the world and how, how they're, they're detrimental to all people, regardless of the Fukushima nuclear disaster, of which this monthly segment has earned its name. Uh, toxic black goo base used by U.S. had enriched uranium. More veterans report cancer. The last two or three months, you can look them up on the massive Fukushima update. I've talked about this. They'll be in the description. Just search them. They're every month. Have been pretty much since the disaster. Um, we've talked about how the military was moved into Uzbekistan and were exposed to a number of toxic the chemicals or radiation, the, 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 the water, the lake, pond, whatever, behind the station where they had our soldiers and our military crew. They called it Lake Skittles because it was so multicolored due to the radiation and the chemicals and poisons that were in it. There were black goo coming up out of the ground. That's a quick update. It's a rather long segment of the show, and I don't want to reiterate it for those who have heard it before, but that's a quick update. Well, this is from Washington. For the last six weeks, a private Facebook group set up to help veterans who served in a toxic base in Uzbekistan has been flooded with new members, many with hauntingly familiar stories. I served at K2. I have cancer. K2, not spice. It was overwhelming, said retired Army Chief Warrant Officer Scott Welsh, a special operations military intelligence officer who deployed to K2 or Kashi Kanada, Uzbekistan in October of 01. There's another source. McClatchley exclusively reported in December. We're going to give that a half because it's the same outlet. I am fair. I also am fair with no pen. Look at that. I've got, I've got so many sources that I literally used up my pen. How's that for sources? All right, fine. I have a marker because the joys of being live. All right, so we're going to give that one a half because it's the same outlet, but it's a different article. McClunchley exclusively reported in December that the Pentagon had known from the beginning that K2, the former Soviet and Uzbek base, was contaminated with radioactive processed uranium, chemical weapons remnants, and underground pools of fuel and solvents that broke through the soil <clears throat> and became, uh, it says, in a black goo. Well, isn't that interesting? The nuclear industry lying. Isn't that something that seems to come up every single month here, or is it just my imagination? Everybody tied to them lies. Despite the contamination, about 7,000 U.S. forces were deployed there after the 9-11 attacks, of course, uh, after the K2 story became public, the veterans K2, there's another half, but I'm not going to do it. Another article. You know what? I am going to give it another half because I'm going to prove a point to this jerk. Facebook site has flooded with new requests, and uh, it says pretty much that they're reporting what we talked about the last time we covered this. 
I was in bad shape from reporting all of these medical issues, said Welsh, who was diagnosed with thyroid cancer in 2014. Again, all these cancers in extremely young people, and that's not odd, no, most, in that age, you might have two or three cancers. We have like 40 in the number that should have one or two, but yet that's not weird to anyone. It's not real common for young people to get thyroid cancer, just so you know. The last government count done by Army in 20, the Army in 2015 was that 61 service members who had been at K2 were diagnosed with cancer, worse than I remember. That study was prompted by a member of U.S. Army Special Operations Command Forces at K2 who developed various types of cancer. Despite the Army Special Operations Command requesting the review, Special Operations Forces personnel could not be identified because of the classified nature of their missions. So they're hiding behind that. The uh, Again, there are, there are designated people in Congress who would be allowed to look at this. So, I mean, that's something the lawyers hopefully will look into. The self-reported 310 cancers from the K2 Veterans Group, if accurate, means the number of K2 stricken veterans is now five times greater than the Army reported. 310 now. Oh, but Sam, it's normal for a certain number of people to... Yeah, it's normal for 310 people who were under the age of 30 to get thyroid cancer or some other odd form. That is not normal. Get your head out of the ground. Some of those K2 veterans will be in Washington this week looking for help. And uh, that is, of course, from Document Cloud. That's another source. I've been wondering all of these years, how many more, how many more, how many more, said Kim Brooks, widow of Army Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Brooks. Another source. That spring, Timothy Brooks and his wife were standing in their Fort Drum kitchen, and uh, he was agitated. She recalled in the phone interview, which McClatchley, Timothy Brooks had just left a meeting at a base where he and other soldiers from the 10th Mountain Division had been handed a form to sign. The unit had just returned home from K2. They told us we were exposed to some really bad stuff, Brooks recalled her husband saying. Yeah, afterwards, sign this, and you know... Document that you know you've been exposed to bad things after we sent you and didn't tell you, knowing, as we pointed out before, that this was a hot spot, that this was a deadly place to be. Over the next few months, her husband's health deteriorated. He began to suffer terrible headaches and his temper changed. But Kim Brooks said, the 6'5 athlete was constantly exhausted and the family uh, still prepared to help him deploy to Iraq for other elements in the 10th Mountain Division in spring of 03. So he even served sick with diminishing health. He's a hero. Enriched uranium in new documents obtained by McClatchley, two classified maps and a PowerPoint highlight that base leadership had identified enriched uranium contamination in the southwest corner of the base adjacent to where K2 sources worked and where they lived. Still, the official guidance on the contamination reported in October of 01 to November of 01 classified environmental survey also obtained by McClatchy was a risk of low, radiation was low if the soldiers remained inside the confines of a large protective dirt berm. Conduct radiological air monitoring for uranium soluble and insoluble in or near the fighting positions nearest for the formal missile storage site, the classified environmental guidance advised. And of course, um, the VA's position has been that there wasn't any proof that this is directly where the cancer came from. That's ridiculous. Mindless. Because cancer in, there isn't any other, anything else that all, whenever you're looking, many of you have followed the coronavirus, will know this. I'm going to write this out. All right. On the back of this bill. Only the very best. All right, so what you've got here is a group of people. They're little dots. These are people. Now, they all have 
illnesses related to one another. Let's say in this instance, this is your thyroid cancer patients. There has to be something in common with all of them to get that, even if it was in their DNA. The only factor that they all have in common is the fact that they served in the poison. And if you don't understand that, then you are an idiot. Yes. The you are an idiot music. That means we're going to go and do the dumb D of the day. For those of you that don't know, the Dunce Cap of the Month, you all know, the Dunce Cap of the Month show is each and every month. And uh, I like the Fukushima show. I'm only doing two a month now, but uh, there's always the dumb D of the day. At the end of any show, including the massive Fukushima update, I used to do a lot more. It's a long story. Uh, CBS Chicago. Uh-oh. Looks like another source. Hinsdale neighbors fight plans to install 5G cell service, citing health worries. Oh, yeah, they're just health worries. I've written articles on this. You can find them at Wits News. Should I source that because it's my article? Because I have other sources in my article. We're going to give that a fourth. That's a one-fourth count as a source. It's, it's, a, it's a gray area there. Fair enough. I wrote an article for this on Wits News about, and I sourced all kinds of stuff, believe it or not, about the dangers of 5G, what it does on a molecular level, what it does to your cells, what it does to your DNA, how it affects uh, cancer risks, on and on and on. And it's anything but safe. And uh, the dumb of the day, of course, going to the people that are pushing this, not the people fighting it. Illinois downloads will improve and cell service will get better. So everyone wants 5G faster internet, right? Wrong! 5G internet also means more cell phone towers, which will appear every 12 homes in some neighborhoods. As CBS 2's Germont Terry reported on Monday night that some in West Suburban Hillsdale are not on board because they question the health risks. In Hillsdale, wooden sticks are already on the ground where cell companies intend to put the cell phone towers. Do not let them put these cancer devices in front of your house. The towers will be 20 to 30 feet high and soaring over the houses, and this will be leaving some believing there's a bigger price to pay for downloading faster. That's because it's backed by science. Paige Glendening, Christine Trainer, and Faria Del Pasquale are all Hillsdale moms. The trio are on a mission to stop 5G from coming to town. This could be really bad, De Pasquale said. They said that the 5G proposal does not just affect Hillsdale, Western Springs, Naperville, and Schoenberg would also be infected. We're not against the technology, Trainer said. But for Stop 5G group questions how safe these small towers will be for those who work or walk and live nearby. But before we start some sort of the canary that has been subjected to all of this, we want to actually have the data that is safety and that it has been proven, Dean Pasquale said. Wisely, I might add. Many of the towers are expected to be near schools, and we know that other levels of technology far below the 5G levels that bone marrow for a child absorbs 10 times the radiation of an adult, Glenn Denning said, and that is true as well. The companies pushing 5G insist that the towers transmit is safe. Of course they do. The money, we talked about that. But there is no concrete testing leaning for or against it. Yes, there is. We covered it in depth. And until then, the Stop 5G groups believe that the projects should halt. We want people to be educated on what 5G is, what the technology is, and what the rollout means for our communities. It means higher cancer rates, for one thing. Look up, and here's the way to get around the lies that are pertaining to the companies pushing this. Look up the levels of radiation being emitted by 5G towers and factor in every 12 houses or so how many feet that is. Then go back and look at studies of radiation 
<clears throat> that show what these levels of radiation have been known to do in the past. It is that simple, friends. It really is that simple.